from the book of Matthew, chapter 18, uh, starting with verse 19. And again, I say unto you, that if two of you shall agree on earth, Lord, as such in anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. For when two or three are gathered, hallelujah, the word says, for when two or three are gathered, hallelujah, together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. Amen. May the Lord add a blessing and agree to the word. Amen. Amen. just to say thank you, Father God. We thank you for bringing us through another week, Father God, allowing us to see another Sunday, Father God. We thank you for getting us to your house safe, Father God. We ask traveling grace and mercies for all of those that are on their way, Father God. We just thank you for all of those who have gathered in your name, Father God. We thank you for a place to worship your name, Father God. We just thank you for all of the praises that are going to go up, Father God, and all of the blessings that are going to come down, Father God. We just ask that you touch everyone under the sound of my voice, Father God. We just ask special blessings over a first lady this morning, Father God. Father God, all of the women that will be participating in the service today, and all of the men that will be supporting Father God, we just thank you for all that you do, Father God. We ask a special prayer for all of those who are worshiping with us on Zoom and Facebook Live, Father God. Just continue to touch us and keep us, Father God. We ask all these things in your precious Son, Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.
I'll do the call to worship. Psalm 100. Make a joy unto the Lord. Unto the Lord. All the land. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord he is God. It is he that hath made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting.
the saving acts and presence of Christ. Within the universal church, we receive the gift of ministry and the life of scripture. In the bonds of Christian faith, we yield ourselves to God that we may serve the one whose kingdom has no end. Blessings, glory, and honor are to God forever. Amen. Amen. Everybody else is just, just uh, um, 
part of New Life Christian Church. We love you with the love of the Lord. Those that are worshiping online, you don't know you're members of this church. Amen. You don't have to be in the sanctuary. All right. Amen. Amen. And we are now uh, doing the commandment that Jesus told us to go ye therefore to the hedges, the highways, airways, skyways, railways, and compel many women to come unto the Lord. Amen. So certainly you're welcome today. Uh, we are the church with the community at heart and, the, and the, a heart for the community and the community at heart. We love people here at New Life. Amen. Yeah. And, and my brothers and sisters, it is Mortgage Sunday. So I'm, come on, somebody say, thank God for mortgage. We pay rent. Now, now, I, I welcome anyone. If you want to just write a check, and we can pay off the mortgage, and, and then we won't have to have mortgage Sunday. But New Life knows that when we pay this off, I'm gonna borrow some real money. Amen. I'm gonna borrow some real money. We gonna do some real, 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 real big stuff. Amen. But our first Sunday is our mortgage Sunday to help offset the cost of our mortgage. Amen. We are not tabernacling. We are in a permanent place that we call our own. Amen. We have been in a place that we tabernacle or in tents. Amen. Uh, but the Lord led us here to 12 Prospect Street. Amen. Amen. 12 Prospect Street. And we took an old warehouse. Amen. And we did a lot of Jesus work. Amen. And we have converted this building, amen, into one of the greatest assets in this community, I would say in New Jersey, amen, we have health care, we have mental health care, we have daycare, about to start senior care, the older I get, amen, we're going to have a senior daycare, we're going to be playing dominoes, bingo, Pokino, amen. We're going to be playing those things, amen, as we get older, amen. But but God has blessed us with a place that we call our own, amen, amen. And so we would that you would please give to the mortgage, amen. And we are a tithing church. Somebody say tithing. I didn't say tithing. I said tithing, amen. My, I often say if you can't give, don't try. But if you can give, don't lie. Amen. Amen. God did not put a tax on the church. Uh, the government taxes your money. But God said, bring your tithes to the storehouse that they will be leaving my house. Try me, test me, prove me, and see if I will not open the windows of heaven. Shower you out of blessing that there will not be room enough to receive. Amen. I thank God that it is no tax in the church but that we bring our tithe, amen. And what that says is that we trust God with God's plan. God is saying you can do more with the nine than you can do with the whole ten. Amen, amen. That's, that's a, a, a mathematical compilation, amen, amen. We would that our trustee would come, trustee Burns, amen. At this time, if you need an envelope, please raise your hands, and our usher will... giving so, so very convenient. If you're giving online, uh, we have, if you have the Give a Fly app, we are New Life Christian Church in Bloomfield, New Jersey. Give a Fly, New Life Christian Church in Bloomfield. If you're giving by way of Cash App, our Cash App ID is dollar sign N-L-C-C-D-O-C. Again, dollar sign N-L-C-C-D-O-C. If you're giving by way of Zell, the Zell ID is nlccbloomfield at gmail.com. Again, nlccbloomfield at gmail.com. Amen. Any questions? Any questions? Any questions? Amen. We're going to ask everyone to stand at this time and we're going to come. Amen. We're going to come from the rear.
Let us stand. All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own. And we give of thee. She has been an outstanding mother. 
business owner, support of this church, has been here from the very genesis of the life. From the time the Lord placed it on our heart, she has been here every step of the way. Next voice that you will hear will be that of First Lady of New Life Christian Church, Disciples of Christ, and First Lady Sandra Webb. If any man, woman, boy, or girl has a hair, they will hear with the spirit.
Spirit of Christ. I'm so thankful for this opportunity to stand behind this sacred desk and bring you some encouraging words this morning. Scripture has already been read, but I would like to um, focus on verses 27 to 29. Which, verse 27, when she heard about Jesus, she came behind him in the crowd and touched his clothes. Because she thought, if I could just touch his clothes, I will be healed. Yes. Immediately, her bleeding stopped, and she felt in her body that she was free from her suffering. Right. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we come before you this morning just to say thank you. Yes. We come before you for just blessing us and rising us this morning. Yeah, yeah. I ask that you give me the words to say and sit me down when I said enough. Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. I would like to use this morning for uh, for words of encouragement from the title, From Hope to Healing. All right, all right. All of us can say that women have made impacts in our lives. Yeah. Through our various vocations, professions, and stages of life. That's right. There have been trailblazers like Harriet Tubman, mm -hmm. Rosa Parks, Women preachers like Ida B. Robinson, who founded Mount Sinai Holy Church, mm -hmm. the Dr. That's Todd McKenzie, first bishop of an AME church. Right, right. Women in the Bible like Esther, Sarah, and Mary, the right. mother of Jesus. Yeah. Right. Unnamed women like the woman with the lost coin, mm -hmm. the woman at the well, yeah. and the woman with the issue of blood. Mm -hmm. Women in my life, my grandmother, Sinek K. Simon, my mom, Mrs. Sandra Kirk, mm -hmm. and my aunt. The late Marcella Ann Wheeler, yeah. all whom I, I love dearly. But this morning, we want to focus on this unnamed woman with the issue of blood. Mm -hmm. uh, Mark wrote to show that Jesus is no doubt the Son of God. Right. Yeah. His writings were action packed, moving with vivid day to day dramatic events in the life of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Jesus kept the movement, always being about his father's business. Right, right. Mark paints a powerful picture of Jesus providing healing and promoting hope. Mm -hmm. Jesus gives hope for the healing because the foundation is based on faith in God. Right. And without faith, it is impossible yes. to please him. Yes. But they that come to him must believe that he is a rewarder to those who diligently seek him. Yes. Right, right. Some of us today need hope. Some of us need faith. Mm -hmm. Some of us need healing. Yeah. Yes. Faith and hope complement each other. Mm -hmm. Without faith, there is no hope. Right. And without hope, without hope, there is no true faith. Right. Hope is expectations for which we wait with full confidence. Yes. Hope connects you with a healer named Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Shane Lopez, author of Making Hope Happen. Believe that hope is the stuff of change, mm -hmm. recovery, and healing. Mm -hmm. Jerome Brookman says in the anatomy of, of hope mm -hmm. that researchers are learning that a change in mindset because of hope has the power to alter chemistry right. in the brain. Mm -hmm. Key elements of hope can block pain from releasing a chemical that mimics the effect of morphine. Mm -hmm. wow. The woman with the issue of blood story is one of hope. That puts faith into action. Right. Hope gave her a positive outlook for the future, despite her present condition. Wow. In the text, this unnamed woman with the issue of blood had been bleeding for 12 years. Mm -hmm. yeah. We don't know if it was some form of hemorrhaging uh -huh. or what kind of bleeding condition she had. But what we do know is that 12 years is a long time for right. life to be flowing out of her body right. because life is in the blood. Mm -hmm. right. She was an outcast in her community because Jewish law considered her unclean. Yes. She was afraid and alone. Mm -hmm. She went from doctor to doctor, test after test, yeah. one specialist to another, mm -hmm. and still couldn't find out the cause of her bleeding. There is no cure for her condition, no healing for her bleeding. And even though the doctors couldn't find a cure, she still had the payment. She didn't have charity care right. or Obamacare. Uh -huh. They wouldn't even let her set up a payment plan. My, my. The Bible says she spent all she had and her sickness not working. Mm -hmm. 
This unnamed sister was in pain and she was suffering. She was broke, mm -hmm. emotionally drained, mentally destroyed, mm -hmm. hopeless and helpless. Mm -hmm. Daily life is flowing out this sister. Mm -hmm. What can she do? Where can she go? Mm -hmm. Who can she get to relieve this situation mm -hmm. to help her deal with her anguish? Mm -hmm. She was in pain, embarrassed, and hopeless. Yeah. Yeah. Have you ever been there? My, yeah. my. Yeah. Where you felt like giving up and calling it quits? Uh -huh. Where you felt like throwing in the towel? Uh -huh. Where you just didn't see a way out? Uh -huh. Most of us have been there, and some are there right now. Well, And if so, there's an answer for you today, just like it was for the woman with the issue of blood. Uh -huh. There is hope for you today in a man named Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. He is the answer to your brokenness. The hope for your emptiness. Mm -hmm. Jesus is the hope for your loneliness, yeah. depression, yeah. and death. That's right. As we further examine the text, Mark writings reveal three things we can learn from this woman's experience right. that gives us hope for our healing today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. First, you have to keep your focus on Jesus. That's right. In a desperate place and desperate situation, this woman heard about Jesus. Mm -hmm. All right. I don't know if she heard about him from Facebook or Instagram, mm. if she read a tweet about him, or maybe she received an email. Mm. Yes. I really don't know, but what I do know is that she heard about him mm -hmm. and after she had done after she had done all she could do, right. she needed to get in touch with him. Yeah, right. She tried everything she could do. But she could not find any human power to relieve her of her illness. Mm -hmm. And her only hope was in Jesus. Right. Yeah. She probably remembered the story on the news about how he healed the paralyzed man uh -huh. whose friends tore the roof off the house. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Or how he fed 5,000. Yeah. Maybe how he cured a deaf and mute man. Uh -huh. But in a desperate search for healing, Jesus became her focus. Yeah. She knew she had to get to him and just touch the hem of his garment. Yeah. She was moved to be moved beyond her condition. Uh -huh. So when she heard he was coming, she got in the crowd. Uh -huh. And she moved with the crowd. Uh -huh. They were pushing and shoving, uh -huh. but she kept moving. Uh -huh. This unnamed sister was breaking the law, uh -huh. but she didn't care. Because she was focused on getting to Jesus. She didn't care who was there or who saw her. Her only concern was getting to Jesus. And when you are trying to get to Jesus and trying to get to your blessing, you can't worry about who is in the crowd. That's right. That's right. Because you do know crowds can be thick. That's right. They will be with you one minute and turn around and crucify you the next. Just stay focused on him. Knowing that the Lord will make a way. Right. Trusting and believing that God will deliver and bring you out. Right. When you are down and out, lift your eyes so you can see Jesus yeah. and not your problem. Right. When we focus on Jesus, we have a different outlook on our circumstance. Right. If I can just get to him is what she wanted to do. Right. If I can just touch the hem of his robe is what she needed to do. Uh -huh. This sister was focused on her heel. Uh -huh. yeah. The next thing the text reveals is that this sister got up and did what she had to do. Mm -hmm. She had got to a place where she was tired wow. of being sick and tired. Right. And she decided to do something about her situation. Uh -huh. Doctors couldn't heal her. Uh -huh. She probably lost all her friends uh -huh. because no one wanted to be seen with her. Uh -huh. And family had turned their backs on her. Uh -huh. She was an outcast look down on in so many ways. Well, You know how we do folks who don't look like us. Uh -huh. We talk bad about them. Uh -huh. And keep their backs in. Uh -huh. This sister was fed up. She had had enough. Uh -huh. So she decided to encourage herself and go look for Jesus. Yes. Hoping and praying for her healing. Uh -huh. She knew she had to get in the presence of Jesus. Uh -huh. Maybe she was bent over. Probably couldn't walk straight up. Uh -huh. She had to get low. She focused on Jesus, uh -huh. and maybe she stayed low because if she would have stood up, uh -huh. 
She might have got lost in the crisis. That's right. By staying low, she could see the hem of his robe mm -hmm. because she knew her hope and healing would be in the presence of Jesus. So she pushed to get through. She pushed to get around. She pushed to touch the hem of his garment. Yeah. Finally, she touched his garment, and immediately the bleeding stopped. She received the miraculous, instantaneous, immediate healing, and Jesus turned around and asked, who touched me? And his disciples seeing all the crowds around him saying, why would you ask a question like that? You see all these people around. They were probably like, what's wrong with Jesus? And how in the world would we know who touched him? But Jesus knew right. someone had touched him. And I want you to know this morning that you can touch Jesus right now. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter who is around. Well, because by touching Jesus, there is healing and hope. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Jesus is the source of everything yeah. you need. In the presence of Jesus, this sister touched, and he touched her right back. Uh -huh. When you can't help yourself, and it seems like no one can help you, right. you have to remember that God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Yeah. Remember, the Lord is the strength of my life. Yeah. Of whom shall I be afraid? Remember to wait on the Lord. Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thy heart. That's right. There is hope mm -hmm. and help for yeah. every bleeding man and woman in the presence of Jesus. That's right. Yes. So many men and women are bleeding. Mm -hmm. Some of you might be bleeding in your finances. Well, or might be bleeding in your marriage. You might even be bleeding on your job. Mm -hmm. You might be bleeding all over the place. Well, but I want to remind you to stay in His presence mm -hmm. because in the presence of Jesus there is Him. Yeah. In the presence of Jesus there is deliverance. Well, in the presence of Jesus there is hope. Mm -hmm. And in the presence of Jesus is where you know that everything will be all right. That's right. Lay all your problems and burdens at the feet of Jesus, believing and trusting that Jesus will work it out. And last but not least, you have to testify about your blessing. Well, because people need to know your story. Once the unnamed woman was healed, Jesus called her out. He knew that power and virtue had gone out of him. She was scared and shaken, but she told him the truth. She told him all she had been through. She told him about all her loneliness and all her isolation and all her pain. And Jesus said to her, daughter, thy faith has made you whole. Go in peace. Jesus wanted more for her than she wanted for herself. Her testimony represented the power of her faith. And like she heard about Jesus, somebody needed to hear about what he had done for her. Jesus didn't want her to have a partial healing or deliverance. Jesus wanted to make her whole. He wanted to restore her completely. He wanted to give her a new identity. He wanted to give her a new life. Well, he wanted to give her a new walk and a new purpose. He wanted to make her new in every aspect of her life. You have to remember that your blessing is not always about you. All right. Sometimes we are blessed to be a blessing to someone else. And through, and through her fear, God spoke, Jordan, thy faith has made you whole. Well, go in peace. Not only did she get a healing, but she was transformed by a miracle. Wow. Jesus wanted those around her to know that deliverance is in him. Yeah. That Jesus, that healing is in him. That power is in him. Yeah. Jesus was surrounded by a crowd of people. She was the only one, but she was the only one who touched him. So you can be in the crowd. You can even be influenced by the crowd. But Jesus wants you to know that the crowd can't stop you. From getting to him, he wanted this woman to leave with a benediction of peace that would help her to be whole. So she didn't have to go back home feeling ashamed. She could go home with her head held high because she was a new woman. Second Corinthians five seventeen says, "Therefore, if any man be in Christ Jesus, well, he's a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things become new." And that same Jesus.
Jesus as a blessing with your name on it. And just like he did it for the sister with the issue of blood, he can surely do it for you. Yeah. So keep on pressing to get to him. Well, keep on trusting him. Keep on pushing. Keep on believing in him. And he can stay in his presence. Because when we are in his presence, doors are open. Well, when we are in his presence, yeah. Jesus is
brothers and my sisters, the gospel message has been proclaimed. We are a Christian church. And our charge is to extend the Christian invitation. An invitation to Christian discipleship. If you are not in relationship with this man that we talk about, this man that can heal all manner of sickness. Did I say all manner of sickness? He's our hope for tomorrow. It's not in your bank account, people. It's not in your professional status. But the only hope we have is in Christ Jesus. When all is said and done, when there's nowhere else to turn, we can call on the name of Jesus. And Jesus will touch you, heal your sickness. But not only heal your sickness, but make you whole. You can be healed from a from an illness and still not be whole. But if you want to be whole, if you want to be whole. No, there's a God-sized hole in the spirit of everyone. There's a God-sized hole that we try to fill with everything. We, we try to fill. I'm not even going to tell you what we try. You know what you try to fill it with. But that hole is there for one purpose. is to fill it with Christ. If you've never given your life to Christ, invite you to come now while the blood is still running low in your veins. While you yet have an opportunity, while you are yet a believer on that monitor, why don't you, why don't you give the Lord, why don't you give the Lord your heart right now? Come on, let's stand, let's stand. Is there one today?
preach that sermon. I'm going to give a, a credit the first time I preach it. But the next time I preach it is mine. Amen. As we continue to worship, this is first Sunday. And those that are worshiping with us online, we want to give you an opportunity to prepare your hearts, your minds. Please get a cracker, a piece of bread, some juice, some wine. There are two ordinances of the church. The first is baptism by water. And the second is Holy Communion, the Eucharist. It was on a Thursday night. Jesus was celebrating the Passover. number one would betray him. One would deny him. But Jesus said, I, I desire to eat this Passover with you. I'm not going to eat it again until I eat it anew in the kingdom, but I, but I desire to eat this. He said, as often as you do this, do this in remembrance of me. We don't get caught up in how many times you should do it. Some do it once a month. Some do it quarterly. Some do it daily. Jesus said, as often as you do this, do this in remembrance of me. At this time, I'm going to ask if our elders will come. If Elder Grissom would bless the bread. And Elder Alexander would bless the juice, the wine, that represents his blood. with another, but ultimately with you. So Lord, you said when two or three 
has happened and we are over that number. We thank you for being in our presence. We thank you, God, for your healing and your deliverance. We thank you, Lord, that you are a God that is with us. We thank you that you are a God that sustains us and keeps us, oh God. We thank you. Lord, as we leave this table, but never your presence. Bless these your people. Bless us now and in the coming days that we will remember this time that we have spent with you. This is our prayer. In Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, the Bible says that they went out and some of him. Come on, stand with us and stand. NLCC Bloomfield or our YouTube channel, Dr. Stephen Webb, New Life Christian Church. Amen. Amen. So our, our, our Women's Day Committee. Amen. Selling popcorn again, y'all. Know that popcorn. That's a, that's a good popcorn. That's a good popcorn. Amen. And so please, ma'am, please, sir. Once you get the text, once you get it, please share it. Amen. After you purchase some popcorn, amen. Uh, the window is the 8th through the... The 4th through the 8th. Amen. Amen. So the window is open. Come on in and shop at the popcorn store. Amen. If you don't want to buy me some. Amen. United Clergy of the Oranges and Vicinity Mass Choir. Come on, put your hands together. It's been a long time since... United Clergy has, has a mass choir, and our own minister Webb, amen, is going to uh, direct that choir. Amen. If you can say, then you can say, come on out, and uh, rehearsals will be Tuesday evenings at New Life right here. Uh, so calling all singers, weekly rehearsals. So please come out, man, please come out, sir, to our uh, United Clergy mass choir rehearsal. Amen. And our Lenten season, come on, bless the Lord. We are having a high time in the Lord. And this week, uh, Dr. Watson will be the preacher. All services are held at the Greater Cornerstone Missionary Baptist Church in the great city of East Orange. Amen. So please come out. Uh, make sure you're there early to get a seat. Amen. And New Life, go back. New Life, we're going out. Uh, amen. We're taking everybody. Uh, I have to preach the Monday, Thursday service. Amen. That's communion. So everybody, la di da everybody, come on out and be blessed. Amen. And next week, our 
special guest preacher is the Reverend Dr. Dawn Stokes Tyler. Amen. Uh, she is a great preacher and she is the uh, assistant uh, director of curriculum services for East Orange Public Schools. If you have children in East Orange and all those activities that you see in curriculum, she is the one that plans those, uh, those events. And Father, following Sunday, our own Elder Anissa Grissom, amen, will be bringing the word, amen, amen. And then the following Sunday, we have our own Elder Joyce Alexander, bringing the word, amen, amen. They're they, they going to move me out the way, amen. And Good Friday, our Good Friday service. Amen. Our old minister Webb is going to lead off. Amen. The Father forgive them. Because they know not what they do. Amen. And that is April 7th. Uh, and that Friday as well, there is a Good Friday fish fry sponsored by the pastor's aid. So you don't have to cook that day. Amen. 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 Spring fling celebration. Amen. Uh, that is the last uh, Sunday of April. Amen. Amen. And uh, we have a guest performance by Essence Soul. Amen. And so we're looking forward to, to that. Amen. Amen. And I don't think uh, we have the announcement, but we are going out to uh, the Random Chapel Free Will Missionary Baptist Church. Uh, where the Bishop Alton Little is the pastor for his 26th anniversary. Amen. Amen. And that is Friday, March, like, the last Friday of the month, right? And so uh, we moved it from Wednesday to Friday. Amen. So you can go to Linton service. Amen. So everybody was going out Friday. Amen. The, the, the masks are coming off. It's still out there, y'all. Amen. But we can go back to church in person. There's nothing like in-person worship. Amen. There's something that happens uh, in the assembling of ourselves together. Amen. Even in that crowd. Amen. Jesus touched them. And so uh, in this crowd, Jesus can touch us. And we can uplift one another. Amen. In the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Again, let's give First Lady a big hand of Amen. I'm just so Hallelujah. Thank God for that. God be proud. Amen. Amen. She has brought forth the word. Amen. Amen. Uh, listen to it throughout the week. Amen. In our private time, we're going to discuss it. Bless the Lord. Amen. Let us stand. Again, thank everyone for coming out to the house of the Lord. Amen. It's Mother Webb's birthday. Come on and give God a ring. It's her 89th birthday, so please give her a call. Amen. Amen. We just so I talked to her this morning. She is in good spirits. Amen. Amen. One is being here, but the legs are moving like they used to. Amen. But certainly uh she she wishes us all well, and she is praying for all of us. Amen. Yeah. So please give Mother Webb a call. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. If all hearts and minds are clear.
We thank you, Lord, for what our eyes have seen, our ears have heard, and our hearts have conceived. We thank you, Lord, for your word, for your word is still a lamp unto our feet, a light unto our path. We thank you, Lord, for the first thing and all the ladies, the women in our lives. We thank you, Lord, for this day. Lord, we pray your blessings and your benediction upon each of these, your people. Go before them to God, behind to protect, and on either side to prop them up. Now unto him, who is able to keep us from falling. Present us spotless before your throne. May the grace of God and the sweet holy communion rest, rule, and abide.